Hey guys, it's Ryan. Welcome back to another oral pathology video. And this time we're going to talk about giant cell lesions of bone. So it's pretty exciting. We're almost done with this lecture series. I only have a few more to go. And this time we're going to talk about lesions that all have these multinucleated giant cells microscopically. So, and this can actually be the crux of a board's question itself. Like which of the following lesions is unlike the other microscopically or similar to this lesion microscopically. And it can be all talking about having these giant cells. So remembering the lesions in this category specifically can really do you, um, can really be helpful for the board exam moving forward. So first we have the central giant cell granuloma. And this one is composed of both fibroblasts and these multinucleated giant cells. And all the ones that we're going to talk about in this video will have these multinucleated giant cells. This one favors the anterior mandible, and um, it has this central and peripheral form. So of course, I talk about the central giant cell granuloma, the more common form, but there's also a peripheral giant cell granuloma. As we've talked about it, um, it's the same deal where the central lesion is affecting bone and you can see it radiographically, whereas the peripheral form is only affecting the soft tissue and you won't see any lesion radiographically. And CGCG is just a handy uh, shortage that's commonly used for central giant cell granuloma. So for, the, for this one, the radiolucency you'll see here is has these thin wispy septations um, but that in it of itself is not pathognomonic or doesn't point to it being a CGCG so you have to have some differential and include this lesion in that differential until you take a biopsy and you you realize it has multinucleated giant cells that's when you can make a definitive diagnosis for the peripheral form Again, you won't see anything radiographically, so you see this red, purpley, gingival mass. Treatment here would be excision. So next we have the aneurysmal bone cyst, or ABC for short. And this is a pseudocyst composed of blood-filled spaces. And it's important we say pseudocyst because this is not a true cyst because it's not lined by an epithelium, like some of the ones we talked about before. This one is a multilocular radiolucency, so it has multiple um, pockets within it. It is expansile. Um, as you can kind of make out from this radiograph, the mandible has expanded significantly due to this uh, lesion. This one, in contrast to the CGCG, favors the posterior mandible. And treatment here would be, again, with excision. Now, an aspirational biopsy with a fine needle is almost always the first thing you do with something like this. And by doing so, you would find out that it is in fact a vascular bone cavity filled with blood. So that is something that you would do and it's called an aspirational or a fine needle aspirational biopsy. Next we have hyperparathyroidism and this is of course an endocrine disorder, but it causes multiple bone lesions that look like CGCGs, resulting from excessive levels of parathyroid hormone. Now, the most, well, there are a couple important things to remember for this one. Probably the most important for the board exam is this term called brown tumor. And this is like the actual lesion that you can see in the radiograph here, and it's due to excess osteoclast activity, resorbing bone, leaving radiolucent lesions. Um, elevated alkaline phosphatase is this enzyme involved with the whole bone apposition resorption pathway, and it's due to too much breakdown of bone due to this ex excess osteoclast activity due to the excessive levels of parathyroid hormones. It all links back together. Now, von Recklinghausen's disease of bone is the result of this condition. And it's not to be confused with something that we talked about when we talked about benign connective tissue tumors. I kind of hinted at this, and it's very confusing because they both have this 
um, this von Recklinghausen's name in it, but they're two entirely different things. So when we see disease of bone, then we can differentiate that from the neurofibromatosis that we talked about with connective tissues, and we can say, okay, disease of bone is talking about hyperparathyroidism. Next we have cherubism, and this is an autosomal dominant um, inherited disease, and that, that fact is probably not too important. I wouldn't have to, wouldn't rec recommend memorizing that per se, um, but this is just to let you know that it is something that you would inherit the abnormal genes to get this disease. And we'll have a separate video on hereditary conditions. So that'll come later, but it's more important that you associate cherubism with these multinucleated giant cells. Because like I said, there are going to be some questions that literally test that fact alone. So definitely link this one to the giant cell lesions we're talking about in this video. Clinically, you'll see a symmetrical bilateral swelling, and radiographically, these exp super expansile bilateral multilocular radiolucencies. Really haven't seen anything like this so far from the lesions we talked about, and it stops growing after puberty. So fibrous dysplasia, which we talked about in the last video on fibrous lesions, can also cause some pretty severe facial deformities but cherubism is bilateral and symmetric, whereas fibrous dysplasia is often asymmetrical, often focused on one side of the mandible or maxilla. Also, if you have an x-ray or the board's question talks about the x-ray, the radiographic appearance of cherubism is very, very different from, from fibrous dysplasia, which is radiopaque. Next we have Langerhans cell disease, also called idiopathic histiocytosis. And you'll see histiocytosis is talking about some of the cells involved with this one. It's a rare type of cancer, and the Langerhans cells or histiocytes are normally found in the skin as antigen-presenting cells, but can cause damage if they build up in certain parts of the body. So they're normally part of the immune system a very integral role in starting an immune response. But if they're found in excess in the bone, they cause these discrete punched out ice cream scoop radiolucencies. It looks like you just took an ice cream scoop and took out some of the bone here, leaving this very interesting lesion. And it can lead to these floating teeth, which is almost pathognomonic for this condition. If you see that in a question, Langerhans cell disease should pop up in your head right away. So the treatment here would be excision. Because it is a type of cancer, usually requires some more aggressive treatment modalities like radiation and chemotherapy. And lastly, we have Paget's disease, which is a progressive metabolic disturbance of many bones, including the spine, the femur, and not to mention the skull and the jaws, causing symmetrical enlargement. It's usually in adults older than 50, and we also see this elevated alkaline phosphatase, which we saw with hyperparathyroidism, due to a similar mechanism the due, due to the breakdown of bone and all that. The pathognomonic thing here is this cotton wool appearance that you see in the radiographs that I have here. In the mandible, you can kind of see it looks like pieces of cotton instead of the normal um, bone appearance with the trabeculations of bone and the cortical plates. And you also see it really well on the skull here. And so dentures and, and even hats become too tight as the head and the jaws literally expand due to this weird breakdown of bone, but also expansile a result of all this faulty mechanisms. Treatment here would be bisphosphonates to interrupt the osteoclast activity and calcitonin. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful in your studies. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, 
please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more on oral pathology and other things dentistry. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next video.